Carolina Olarte. Um, I'm a independent researcher and I'm um, going to touch upon a more technical issue in relation to mass graves and these princes um, and the way in which uh, transitional justice has been used and could potentially be used as a way to sanitize uh, the continuity of disappearances and torture that happened even after you want fake declarations of post-conflict uh, in the name of a peace to come. Um, so I'm just uh, I'm going to focus about what is happening in Colombia in relation to the national system for the recognition of human remains and how the very technicalities, the very problems related to the, um, technical issues with the system makes it impossible to have a memory about the human remains that are found. Um, so, uh, what happened in Colombia very quickly is that in 2004, the government initiated a peace process with the paramilitary groups. And uh, it was about 30,000 people demobilizing. Uh, today, uh, only three people have been received a judicial uh, decision in relation to uh, the crimes against humanity that they have committed. And what we have is a generalized impunity for all the other uh, parameter people that supposedly demobilized. Um, in Colombia, at the time, uh, by October 2010, um, officially, there were officially recognized 2,000 and 400 mass graves containing 3,017 bodies. Not uh, formal sources speak of 50,000 disappeared people and thousands of more mass graves all around the country. Um, <coughs> the problem with the mass graves in Colombia, it's, uh, it's a, a technical problem, as I said before. Um, they created in 2005 a system and information network for disappeared people and corpses. Um, despite the good intentions of many of those involved in the search for truth within the peace and justice process, the current situation of mass graves and the accompanying narrative resembles an extension of uh, forgetting and not really wanted to deal with those in the mass graves and the families of them. Um, what we have actually is that despite the massive exhumations done within the framework of the transitional justice law, the system of information created um, ignores completely the need to introduce information uh, of the recuperated osseous remain into the national system. So what happens, uh, basically, is that you can introduce the cause of death in the national system, but you cannot introduce in the system uh, what happened before. So if the person has been tortured, it's very difficult to introduce in the very system that that person was not just killed, but tortured before, or raped before the killing. Um, and this is because there is no methodological tool in this national system to introduce information uh, about specifically skeletonized remains. So that's the other issue. So people that are skeletonized, that are without flesh, um, it's very difficult to introduce information about them uh, because of the very um, characteristics of the system. So what they do is that, because the, the system doesn't let them to put the information in it, the people that have been skeletonized because of the conditions of the soil or because of the time that has passed by, they are just not getting into the national information system, even though the government is using the system to show internationally the uh, willingness of the state to prosecute crimes against humanity. So what we have is a fake system to show internationally uh, a fake will to persecute perpetrators of uh, extrajudicial killings and disappearances. Um, the costs and time required to apply, for instance, DNA test is adduced as a justificatory reason for this mission. Yet, other methods 
much less costly, such as gathering anti-mortem or before the dead information, are not part of the whole digging apparatus of truth. Additionally, there is a very telling absence of research in regarding mass graves related sites, and in many occasions, the graves themselves are left unprotected for years, allowing for the moving of the corpses somewhere else. This is particularly striking, taking into account the declaration of paramilitary mobilized members uh, in the last four years, according to which they created on, under the advice of um, members of the military and the government to create two ovens to uh, disappear human remains in order to avoid uh, the statistics that were increasing publicly about the disappear. So that's the next, next stage in terms of the disappear. The person is not just disappeared, but actually wherever human remain that is found is being completely destroyed by the paramilitaries in order to avoid international and national accountability in these uh, ovens to get rid of, of bodies. Um, under such circumstances, uh, the impediments to mass graves exhumations might be seen as constitutive as a form of disposing of death, which is functional to force disappearances and killings, and is functional to the continuity of these killings. Um, so I, what I wanted to do with this very brief paper is just to, to raise awareness about a tendency in the last 10 years of certain countries to appropriate and co-opt the language and the discourse of human rights and transitional justice in order to give uh, an image of willingness to prosecute um, extrajudicial execution and disappearances, when in reality what they are doing is creating a minimum amount of effort to appear as if they were actually um, persecuting the crimes against humanity. So just want to say that we should try to fight the good intentions when those good intentions are actually um, covering the continuity of killings and disappearances and, and the destruction of complete destruction of, of human remains, which will never, ever, ever will be found out who they were. So that's it.